Oh, oh I gotta use my microphone, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, hope you all are having a good time. Good first day of conference so far, right? Yeah, it's wonderful to be together. I really uh, can feel the energy and the sentiment that we all have for each other. And uh, tonight is just really going to be about some fun. Uh, you hear about the importance of our stories. Well, we're going to be talking about a really wonderful story here uh, this evening. And we're going to get the show on the road here shortly. But I just wanted to say a couple of things. I guess I'll sit down here in a minute. But when we first planned this event, we were anticipating uh, hosting cast members for Flaming Hot and, of course, our longtime friend and partner, Eva Longoria, making her debut as director. But as you know, both the Writers Guild of America and the Screen Actors Guild, AFTRA, are on strike. We fully support their efforts to seek greater fairness and equity for their work and we urge the studios to resolve these issues as soon as possible. So we will hopefully see something happen. But I'm pleased to announce uh, that we do have a very special guest joining us. Someone whose life story is so extraordinary, they made a movie about it. A high school dropout from a working class Mexican-American family, Richard Montañez, spent 40 years at PepsiCo, rising up the ladder from janitor to executive. And he is considered one of the fathers of Latino marketing. I'm so pleased that he can join us here this evening as we introduce the story of his work and life. Please join me in welcoming Richard Montañez. take a long time here, but uh, I do think since we had Richard in the house and we're going to be showing the film, we might just at least take advantage of a couple of questions so you all can hear from him directly. I know he shared some remarks earlier this morning at the Changemakers breakfast, but Richard, we're so thrilled to have you here and I'm personally thrilled to, to see your arc and your journey come uh, uh, together. You know, when you were growing up, did you ever imagine having a movie made about your life? And I guess I'm particularly interested in how the experience of working in Hollywood was as you saw this project come together. Well, I'll tell you, Bob, not one did I ever dream that there would be a movie being made about me and my wife and my family, nor did I dream about being an executive. Uh, my dream was I just wanted to be happy. Uh, it was simple as that. And working with Hollywood was a, a very good uh, experience for me. And what helped me was being an executive for many years, you know, being a business person. I was a rookie in Hollywood, but I wasn't a rookie as a uh, business person. So, you know, I wrote a book uh, in 2013 called The Boy of Burrito and a Cookie. And I wrote it for my uh, children and my grandchildren. And when it got published, the uh, literature expert just tore it apart. You know, I said, uh, this, this book should never been published. This guy doesn't know how to put his commas in place. You know, it doesn't spell right. But I told people, I was never trying to win a spelling contest, you know. But here's what happened. As ridiculous as that book is, it's starting a, a bidding war in Hollywood. You know, because uh, had never, even though our stories are, there's a millions of us, they would never seen it, a story like that. It, it, for me and you, it's, it's your uncle's story, your brother's story, so it was a good experience to meet with uh, all the uh, different uh, uh, CEOs of, you know, Paramount, uh, MG, all of them, just, you, know, you can name them, we, we met with them. And, uh, it, was a, it was a great experience. And the other thing that I like to tell, especially the young people, you know, one of the reasons that uh, uh, we were able to do what we want during the, uh, during the production was, uh, during the bidding war, 
it wasn't about money. You know, I wanted some controlling rights. You know, this, this organization here offered more money, but I took Fox's offer because they gave me more controlling because what I did want, this is the crazy thing about it, is that I broke into Hollywood not knowing what Hollywood is. So in my contract, I wanted a Latina director. I never knew it was going to be Eva, but I had to have a Latina director. I had to have, yeah, you know, I had to have Latino actors in front of the camera and behind the camera, and uh, it all worked out in my favor. So it was, it was, you know, it's astonishing that a rookie like myself was able to break through into something. And I know that so many others have gone before me and opened the door. So that's how we came to uh, having the movie Flaming Hot. Wow, that's that's interesting. Not everybody gets to have the Hollywood experience. Um, well, everyone here. Uh, maybe knows your story or will as we uh, show the film here, they may not know that you actually have a long history working with the Needles U.S. In fact, you funded our acclaimed Escalera program that helped high school students prepare for college. I was wondering if you could share with us uh, why you felt it was important to work with us and other Latino organizations. Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you for uh, bringing up that history. Uh, when I started to climb up and get promoted, I, find, I found myself in a position of, of power, a position of influence. And I, I thought hard about it, and it was part of my purpose and, and my calling. Uh, so I found ways. I went and followed their strategy. And I took their strategy and made it my strategy. So I reversed the process. Usually it's, here's our strategy, you fit yourself in it. But I, I knew that for my community, what was important to my community was education, workforce, development, you know, and health and wellness. So I applied those into my, uh, into my uh, strategy, and I saw that my numbers, this is what's crazy about it. You know, the reason I lasted for 42 years at PepsiCo, not because they really liked me, I made money for them. I knew how to sell. And I was selling to my own community when no one else was doing it. So it was very important that when we started the Escalera, uh, it was, you know, it became a multi-million dollar uh, strategy. And I've, I've always said this, and I, I mean this with respect to everyone. You know, when we get a Latino or Latina in a position of influence and power, it needs to support our agenda. And I said this, you know, what good does it serve us to have a Latino vice president if he's not writing the checks where we need them? And that's the one thing that I wanted to do. I wanted to make sure that I was supporting what my community needed because it was my own community. And look at it this way, as a business, I would go to my, when we started the Escalera, I'm gonna give you just a small example of how I did it. I took social philanthropy, turned it into community development that lead to retail activation because these people know dollars. That's all they care about. They don't care whether you and I feel good. They care about it. are we making money. So when we started the Escalera program, we were sending kids, we were getting them to graduate from high school, and then we were sending them to college, and we were paying for the, the college tuition. So I would go to my customers and i said, look, I want that space over there. If my competitor is doing what I'm doing for you, give them my space. And they say, what are you doing for me? I'm educating your children. The people that come in here, and they said, sign me up. So you see, when, when you turn your community and engage it with your business, it works for everyone. That's fantastic. I really appreciate that. We're, we're just going to have one more question, because I know folks want to actually see the film. but. Uh, you know, I've attended a lot of the screenings already, uh, and I've seen how Flaming Hot has resonated and been received by our Latino community and audiences. I'm curious, though, and again, they've enjoyed it, but what is the message you want our community to take away from your film? Another great question. You know, when uh, me and my wife started the process of you know, working with the script writers and getting the movie, there was one thing that we, we didn't want to do, and that was we didn't want to show anyone our beginning. You know, I never talked about, you know, my bad days. I never talked about, you know, being behind bars. I, I, I didn't glorify in that. 
and neither did my wife. But people would say, but it's going to inspire those who need a second chance. You know, so when, when the process went out, we kind of had to like, oh, wasn't sure how people were going to react to it. You know, because we didn't want the same old thing. I wanted to inspire young people never to give up. And I wanted to inspire young people that success isn't, you know, uh, your, your zip code doesn't determine your success. You know, where you grew, I mean, I grew up in a, you know, a farm labor camp. You know, everybody in my family picked grapes. You know, my first language was Spanish. You know, I, I didn't know, I didn't learn English until I started going to school. Some people, today, first time, you still can't speak English. You know, but I'm learning, so. We wanted to inspire our people. And, and I know that when you see this movie, it, it's your story. It's your deal story. You know, it's your brother's story, your sister's story. It's just not my story. This, this is our story. So I'm happy that we're able to celebrate this together. Well, Richard, we really appreciate you being here, presente, and not forgetting you. You get these big Hollywood movie stars in there. Like, <laughs> you have to set up appointments. You go through agents. But you're here, still accessible to us, and, and really inspiring so many with the book, with the movie, and with your story and your presence. You know, I'm thrilled that Eva Longoria directed this film. Eva's been a, a champion for our community, and this project was a perfect match. And I know she's really been wonderful in, in engaging you and, and your family. and. Hopefully, you all, as Richard has said, will see a little bit of your own story here. And we, at Unidos U.S., commit to continuing to lift up more of our stories and platforms that will capture them so that people all over will understand the true narrative of our community. There's so many things said about our community, misunderstood or ignored. We need more of these stories so that folks can actually get to know who we are and ultimately how we contribute in so many ways to this great country. So thank you, Richard. It's showtime. Enjoy the show, okay? <laughs>